It's Wednesday, July 14th, and the time for your Barbados Today Morning News update. Barbados's public health response to small spikes in COVID-19 cases is inadvertently promoting unemployment, poverty, and social decay, while excluding key inputs from the voices that represent the country's working masses. That's the contention of the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations of Barbados. Following a week of increased COVID-19 cases, Minister of Health and Wellness, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, announced a two-week 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew that went into effect on Tuesday. Employers were also warned to tighten their in-house COVID-19 protocols, and employees have been asked, wherever possible, to return to working remotely. But the c 2 sab General Secretary, Dennis Tepeza, has slammed authorities for failing to present a plan that allows the country to function effectively while simultaneously managing the COVID-19 situation. The continued panic being fueled as a consequence of small classes of persons who have contracted the coronavirus is like to create and drive the, the country once more into a crisis mode. There can be no doubt that the authorities recognized by global trends that the coronavirus is not going anywhere soon. It therefore raises questions as to what concrete plans are being contemplated so as to ensure the economy remains up and running and with minimum disruption. It cannot be good for the economy that some sectors are not allowed to do business as usual and others operate on dependent threat of forced closures due to the need to constrain clusters which may arise from time to time. The country cannot exist in a state of fear and operate in a crisis mode for any indefinite period of time. Not only is there a need to address the problem of unemployment as a matter of priority, but attention also has to be paid to the rising incidence of poverty and social decay. DPs also expressed concern about a lack of consultation at the social partnership level about the measures to be implemented. We are in a situation where my understanding is that we get a phone call to tell us that we're going to make an announcement now. I mean, this is unacceptable. This is not inclusiveness. This is, to my mind, something out of the ordinary in terms of the behavior that is being exhibited. And we will want to denounce it and ask that we are included because that is what we said the social partnership is supposed to do. Two Barbadian-owned companies will have the chance to expand their services to Nigeria as the island looks to strengthen its ties with African nations. Global Integrated Fintech Solutions and IP Anywhere Global will work alongside a Nigerian digital transformation giant, Telnet Nigeria Limited, under an initiative that was made official during a press conference and electronic contract signing on Tuesday morning. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Dr. Jerome Walcott, said the initiative would help build bridges between Barbados and Africa. I must place on record the government of Barbados's commitment to building commercial diplomacy with countries in Africa. The deepening of our diplomatic relations with West Africa through the imminent establishment of Barbados's High Commission in Ghana is already facilitating this government's exploration of a new and dynamic ethos of national development by a redirection of its diplomacy through the stimulation and encouragement of private sector partnerships, as is evident by today's ceremony. It is imperative that we understand the industry about which we are speaking, a combination of technology and financial services that have transformed the way businesses operate globally. The global fintech industry has grown from a market value of $127 billion in 2080 and is presently estimated to have a market value of almost $300 billion. Community activist Adrian Donovan is appealing to authorities to implement a traffic management plan 
to ease of the traffic woes in Oystein's Christchurch. He tells Barbados today that after many years of consistent congestion on the busy main road and several accidents, the situation is yet to be addressed. He says some business owners affected by the traffic congestion have long called for the situation to be remedied. It is really a call for the transport management authorities in the country to take another look at the flow of traffic here in this particular area. I don't know if any could be done to realign the entrance of the drive throughs and find another entrance if that is possible. But something has to be done because it is too congested. And, um, and going forward, I don't see the situation any getting be any better unless something re really happens. In addition, we have a number of businesses in the area who are definitely affected. And they have been crying out for some time now. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To news from the region, Cubans living in Guyana stage protests in support of their countrymen back in Havana. Gordon Mosley of News Source Guyana reports. On Monday, the small group of Cubans who are currently living in Guyana protested outside the Cuban embassy in Kingston, raising the same concerns being raised by their fellow Cubans back home. The communist country has found itself facing tough economic times because of the pandemic and the ongoing U.S. blockade and rising COVID-19 cases and deaths. With placards in their hands, the Cubans in Guyana denounced their government back in Cuba and complained about the realities many of their family and friends are facing back home. And the people in Cuba in this moment is dying because the police and the regiment, the socialist regiment, they are killing the Cuban people in this moment in the street in Cuba. And we are here in support of our brothers who are fighting in Cuba just for freedom for human rights. It was explained that the protests taking place in Cuba are significant because it's against the law to protest against the government there. The Cubans said many persons find themselves restricted and longing for real freedom. Finally, on the international scene, health officials in the U.S. are concerned over a hike in new COVID-19 cases due to the highly contagious Delta variant. We get more in this CBS News report. COVID cases have doubled nationwide in the last week and are rising in 47 states as the dangerous Delta variant spreads across the U.S. The CDC says most of those infections are in people who have not been vaccinated. We are seeing resurgences now and we are not seeing that uh, people who are vaccinated are at high risk of uh, infection at this point. Today's comments come after a meeting between Pfizer representatives and top U.S. health officials on a possible booster shot. Israel has already begun to distribute a third Pfizer dose, but Dr. Anthony Fauci says it is not needed now. You really do have to examine why you're talking about a booster or a fully vaccinated person when we have so many people in this country who are not vaccinated at all yet. Just relax. Less than half the country is fully vaccinated, including Mississippi, which has the lowest vaccination rate in the country. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.